Hi, Colin Lay here with Lay Roots. I want to talk to you about the importance of naming guardians for your minor children. At Lay Roots, we are on a mission to educate parents on making great legal decisions uh, for their family, for their kids, throughout their lifetimes. And when we're out um, at educational events or um, you know, trade shows, sometimes people ask us why it is important to name guardians for their kids. The main importance of naming guardians for your kids is that if something happens to you and you haven't chosen who should be a guardian for your minor children, a judge is going to make that decision for you. So will be a judge who doesn't know you, who doesn't know what's important to you, doesn't know your values, your family, relationships between family members, your future goals for your children, life plans, all that stuff, they'll make the decision without any of that important information. So either you choose or you have a judge choose for you. And you might not like the decision that they make. Um, you know, it might not be who you think it is. Um, there might be conflict amongst your family members. Uh, multiple people might come, come up and fight uh, for the guardianship of your children. Um, and you know, to give you an example, so say when I was a kid, when I was growing up, if my parents hadn't chosen guardians uh, in case something happened to them, and you know, fortunately nothing did happen to them, but if they hadn't chosen uh, and it went to a judge, a judge might have been choosing between, say, uh, my brother, uh, my uncle on my dad's side, so my father's brother, or my aunt on my mom's side, so my mom's sister. And the judge would be looking at them, you know, on paper. Uh, so on paper, my uncle, uh, he's married, had a professional career, PhD, uh, you know, looked lived uh, lived close to us, uh, same state, lived about an hour away. Uh, so all that's good on paper. Uh, looking at my aunt, you know, very similar, married, um, had a job, but you know, she didn't have a professional degree and she lived across the country from us, you know, uh, 1,500, 2,000 miles away from us. So on paper, uh, if you're the judge, you know, who would you choose, right? So my uncle, you know, he, uh, maybe just a little bit, looks a little bit more qualified. Um, but knowing my mom, that would have been not her first choice. Uh, you know, she would have wanted her sister uh, to look after us. So what the judge wouldn't see is uh, my uncle, you know, they lived in, I um, love them very much, um, I love visiting them. But you know, they lived out in the mountains, they lived on their own, um, very rural uh, part of the state. Um, you know, whereas my aunt, you know, had traveled around the world. Uh, you know, she was a musician, more of an artist, um, and shared a lot of the same parenting values that my mom had. Uh, so that would have been her choice, but really the, there would have been no way for the judge to know that if she had not put anything down on paper. So, you know, if there's uh, somebody in your family who might look good on paper, but for reasons that are off paper, you know, um, you might not want them guardian, a judge might not know that. So it's important for you to uh, choose the, the guardians who you'd like if something would happen to you and to get those down in writing. Because if it's not in writing, doesn't mean anything for a judge. Uh, so if you haven't done that before, you can attend one of our uh, educational classes. Uh, we do workshops where we help people execute those, those documents for free. Um, you can also go to lawyerhuman.com. Uh, you can actually name guardians uh, online and it'll spit out the, the documents for you to sign. And then you'll have that off of your to-do list. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions about estate planning, keeping your family out of court and out of conflict, send us 
a question at support at layroots.com. Take care.